Welcome. Good morning, or today, uh, not today. <laughs> good morning, good evening, uh, wherever you are right now. Uh, my name is Eki, and I have the privilege to do this Facebook Live Chapel today. I'm a port chaplain in Bremerhaven, Germany. And yeah, thanks be to God that we have this chance to, to be connected somehow around the world with this technology. And I lead through this Bible study today. And when Mark asked me a few, a few uh, weeks ago if I would be willing to do this live chapel, I uh, did not hesitate because I like to, to study God's word, to, to do a Bible study with people, to preach. And also I realized that God put a lot of things on my heart that I would like to share. So I was ready to do that. But Mark gave me a, a passage to speak on. Like, you know, as you know, with the last few weeks, we are going through the book of Acts. So I have a certain passage to study. And I did not, I did not felt comfortable with that in the beginning because I never really studied the book of Acts. I read it through it, you know, several times, but I never really studied verse by verse. So when I read the passage that Mark gave me the first time, I felt uncomfortable with it because I read it. I didn't got much out of it. I read the second time, same thing. And then finally, it was like that God opened up my, my, my mind for that. And he started to speak to me through those passages. The same happened also for this passage today that I will mention in a few moments. My encouragement is that no matter if, if you're a Christian, a new, new believer, do not read only the passages that you are familiar with or that you like. Read the passages um, that you're also not familiar with. <laughs> My recommendation would be to read book by book. There are 66 books in the Bible. Read a book from, you know, from beginning to the end, and then you do the next book. And then read it verse by verse, because through this, God will open up a lot of things about yourself and how he relates to you, how you relate to him, and he will give you insights. So do not only be a verse picker, your favorite passage, but go, th you know, through verse by verse. And that is, you know, that really helped me to stick through this. Well, and the first, we are still in the first um, missionary journey of Paul. We started last week in chapter 13 of the book of Acts. Today we are in chapter 14. Paul started in Antioch, which is now southern Turkey, which is very close to, to the Syrian border. After that, he visited Cyprus, you know, this little island in the Mediterranean Sea. And then he went up to Galatia, which is now Turkey, to several places to share the gospel there. And Richard yesterday talked about Paul's and Barnabas' trip to Iconium, still again, Turkey. And at the end, they fled because the people in those places were planning to mistreat and to stone them. So they fled to Lystra and to Derby. still it's, um, east of Iconium, still all in Turkey. So they fled to those places and the surrounding areas for what reason? For hiding? Dis covering up? No. They went to those places to continue to preach the gospel. They did not give up on their calling to share the gospel. And that really reminded me for one point, or to one point, to stick to something that God called you to do. My wife, Nadine, and I, we celebrated two days ago our second, 22nd anniversary. You know, back in May 16, 1998, we said to each other, yes, with God's help. And 
like in every marriage, you go through good times, but you also go through bad times. And you actually, you promise that to, to your spouse, you know, in good as in bad times, for richer and for poorer, in health and in sickness. I never had an idea at that time what those words mean. But Nadine and I, we, had, we went through difficult times. You know, times, bad times, times of troubles, times of difficulties, times of doubts, really doubting, man, have I done a big mistake? And there were times when we cons really to consider to give up on each other. But our good God, he helped us through, and that is our testimony today. If we would have based our love only on feelings, we would have not been together anymore, for sure. But we ask God on that day, please help us. And almost every day, I'm asking oh God, please help me to be a good husband, to love my wife, to help me. And we put God on that promise that we gave each other, he, we put him in our midst. And God is there no matter what kind of circumstances we have been through or where you are right now. God is there. He wants to help you. And no matter what you will face in the future, you know, maybe you have marriage problems. Maybe you have financial problems. Maybe you have health issues. Or whatever issues you might have, God is there. And he wants to help you. Maybe the outcome will be different of what you were dreaming of, but God is there holding your hand. And that is my encouragement that I got even from this little passage. You know, Barnabas and Paul, they, they sticked to their, to their calling. Well, that was a long introduction. Um, let's go into the text in chapter 14, verse 8. Now at Lystra, still Turkey, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet he was crippled from birth and had never walked before. He listened to Paul speaking. And Paul, looking intently or directly to him, seeing that he had faith to be made well, he said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. I mean, this man, he was crippled from birth onwards. He never used his legs, his feet to walk or to jump around. And we have to understand the Holy Spirit gave Paul here the ability somehow to see what was going on in the invisible spiritual realm because he saw the faith of that man. And because of that, you know, this man jumped when Paul told him to. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lyconian. You know, Lyconian language is not, was not a language that everybody spoke. Only those people in Lystra. You know, the world language was at that time Greek. Like today, it's English. Everybody or most people understand, speak a little, at least a little English. But at that time, it was Greek. So when those people stood up and they were crying out, out um, speaking out loud in Lyconian, it sounded like this. The gods, well, not the gods, die Götter haben Menschengestalt angenommen und sind zu uns herabgekommen. Was? What are you talking about? Die Götter haben Menschengestalt angenommen und sind zu uns herabgekommen. If you are not from Germany, you do not understand the word. Paul and Barnabas, they felt the same. They didn't understood, they haven't understood a word what the crowds just have said. Because the crowd said, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of man. Because of this amazing miracle, they thought the gods of Hermes, I come to the point in a minute, of Hermes and Zeus came down to perform this amazing miracle because we can read this in the next verse. In verse 12, Barnabas 
they called Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifices with the crowds. So they really thought, because there was a local myth, they believed that you know, God, in the form of Hermes and Zeus, came down, once visited the city in a human form. And so these people had no idea about the God we know. They were pagans who worshipped all kinds of different gods and idols. And two of them, in this case, were Hermes and Zeus, as we can see here in the text. And they even built a temple for Zeus. So that was the, the, the belief, the faith of those pagans in Lystra. So they have a complete misconception. And that brought me to the point ready to worship. Whom do you worship? I mean, as Christians, we would say, hey, we only worship God. But is this really true 24-7? Or are there maybe also things that we worship? Our families, our kids, our job, money, um, different things. And as a human, it's sometimes very easy to worship the creation more than the creator to be more thankful for the present, for the gift, than of the giver. And Paul addressed this here because he says, <clears throat> well, they did something in verse 14, but when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, man, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you and we bring you the good news but you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them when Paul addressed the arrow he started to speak to them about God as their creator he changed the message in a certain way if you have studied this book of Acts before of you have joined Facebook Live Chapel. Uh, Richard yesterday talked about where Paul and Barnabas spoke to Jews and quoting from the Old Testament, from the Torah. They used the shadow of Christ in the Old Testament. But here, those pagans, they had no idea what Christ is or what the Old Testament or the Torah is. They had no idea. So, Paul presented God as the creator who made heavens and the earth and everything that is in there. Well, what does that mean for us? Do we always use the same method when we speak to people about our faith? I hope not, because Jesus or Paul, Barnabas, they haven't done it. They used different methods, different messages. They didn't change the meaning. It was still the gospel that we as a human race are fallen, are corrupted, are sinful, and that God in his love and mercy sent down his son Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his own son for all our sin that we have done. You know, we have sinned with our eyes, lustful thoughts, impure, wrong words, lying, stealing in our actions. We have done all those things, but Jesus, he never committed a single sin. Never in his mind, never in his mouth, never with his eyes, never in his actions. He was completely pure. And he sacrificed that perfect life for the sins of the world, for your sin, for my sin. So, and that is so important. So he didn't change that. It's still the point, but he is, ta he is talking about God as the creator. We should never water down the message which happens today so often. We as a human race, we are lost and we are in need of a savior. <clears throat> well, 
Where did I stop? Paul said, <clears throat> In the past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. So he, he brings into mind that God is a good God who sustains them, who brings food, brings rain and sun and all that. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifices to them. They were still worshiping Paul and Barnabas as Zeus and Hermes. But the amazing thing that happens afterwards in verse 19, but the Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. What was happening here? One minute, Paul and Barnabas were, you know, worshipped as, as gods. You know, um, sacrifices were, were brought to them. And then the people in um, Iconium, in Antioch, they, I mean, this is, these are cities about 30, 40, 50 miles apart from each other. They came to Lystra to kill, actually, or to be willing to kill Paul. And they persuaded those people in Lystra to do the same. So they were, um, they were chasing after Paul and stoned him. Now, but when the disciples gathered about him, about Paul, he rose up and entered the city. And on the next day, he went on with Barnabas to Derby. So they went back to those places where they were chased off. You know, they were, um, they were um, those people wanted to, to stone them in Derby. So they went back. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and to Antioch. So they visited those places a second time. Those places who were chasing them, who were ready to stone them, to kill them. And that really made me think a few days ago. How do I um, react when people do not like when I share the gospel message with them? When there is, um, I don't have the right word right now, I'm sorry. But when, there, when a critique comes up, how do I deal with them? Paul he had only one goal, to share the gospel with the people and to make disciples. Because he went back to those places, those people who have received faith in Christ already, he wanted, he wanted to, to strengthen the believers. That was his goal. Paul was stoned five times. Five times. And I believe every time when he entered a city, he thought about, maybe I will be stoned to death today. But this didn't kept him from sharing the good news. He was willing to lay down his life. What about you? What about you? What about me? I'm willing to lay down my life, to be threatened, to be killed for my faith. I pray that God will be giving me the ability do that in those places when I maybe when I I don't know when I face those times I struggle with that I struggle with rejection when I share the good news I have to be open to you it's not easy but here we have a great testimony of Paul <clears throat> so when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. I read the passage already, sorry. For one reason, to strengthen the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. You know, the Christian faith is not just a nice highway, a nice way of life to receive the blessings of God, having eternal life, 
Now here we have the testimony that we enter through many tribulations the kingdom of God. There will be difficulties, temptations, ad adversities. We have to be reminded of that. This is the normal Christian life. Sometimes, you know, when you fell, fall down, don't stay there. Shake off the dust and stand up and continue your walk. <clears throat> continue. You know, falling is not, is not the issue. The issue would be to lay down or to not to stand up again. Like Paul, what a great example. He was beaten, he was stoned, but he stood up again and continued his ministry, his calling. <clears throat> and then in verse 23, and when they had appointed elders for them in every church with prayer and fasting, they committed them to the Lord in whom they had believed. It is so important that a church is, is, um, has spiritual people for guiding those believers in, in truth. And that's what was Paul and Barnabas doing here. And then verse 24 onwards, when they have passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia, and when they had spoken the word to Persia, they went down to Artelia, and from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commanded to the grace of God for the work that they had fulfilled. That was the starting point of their ministry, and they came back to that. And when they arrived and gathered the church together, they declared all that God has done for them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. It was not the work of Paul, not the work of Barnabas. It was the work of God, and they gave credit to him alone. And they remained no little time with the disciples. You know, what an amazing story that we have here. I hope this few verses really encouraged you in your walk with Christ. And if you're not a believer, maybe you see the testimony of those people, of Paul and Barnabas, how they sacrificed their lives. I know that's not the only reason. There are a lot of people sacrificing lives for all kinds of stuff. But here we have Paul's testimony, how he shared the good news, the gospel message that we are lost and we need a savior. And I hope that God will bless you. I hope he will keep you. And I hope I will, one day I will see you face to face, not only on a camera. And before um, we depart, I would love to pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this chance to share your word. Lord, that is all what we have. Your word is uh, sweet to our mouth. And Lord, I pray that all the good things that your word just shared, that it will bring up fruit. Lord, I pray that all the good things that you have started, that you will bring to the end. And I praise you in your precious name. Amen. Okay, God bless you guys. Bye-bye.